Hello, my name is Myra Brower. I'm South Atlantic Council staff, and this presentation is to update you on what the South Atlantic Council is considering in Snapper Grouper Amendment 44, which addresses modifications to Yellowtail Snapper. This diagram shows you the process for developing an amendment and the various opportunities the public has to sub uh, submit comment. So right now we are early in the process of uh, developing this amendment. We are requesting scoping, um, which means the public has the opportunity to let the council know before they consider any management um, uh, alternatives, um, you know, what their, what their input is on, on managing um, the various fisheries. So what I'll do uh, in this presentation is give you a little background on the management history of yellowtail snapper and the status of that stock. I'll give you just a very brief snapshot of uh, landings for both the commercial and the recreational sector. We'll go over the possible actions the council can take. And finally, we'll talk about how you can provide uh, some comments. So here's a, a timeline of management that pertains to Yellowtail Snapper. Beginning in 2012, uh, there was a stock assessment conducted through the CDAR process, CDAR 27A, that showed the stock was not overfished nor undergoing overfishing. Um, I should tell you that Yellowtail Snapper is considered to be a single stock that spans the jurisdictions of both the South Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Councils. Um, there was at the time in 2012 an emergency rule that uh, allowed the South Atlantic Council to increase the commercial catch um, because the stock assessment indicated catches could be increased. In the meantime, the council was working on an amendment, Regulatory Amendment 15, which permanently modified the annual catch limits. Um, there was another amendment in 2014 uh, that was just to adjust um, something called the minimum stock size threshold, which is just a level below which a stock is considered overfished. The council did this for several snapper grouper species, including yellowtail snapper. In 2016, Regulatory Amendment 25 uh, was the vehicle through which the council changed the fishing year for both sectors. Um, and then they began work on Snapper Grouper Amendment 44, which is the amendment we're talking about tonight. So that was begun um, uh, a while ago. The council developed that amendment through the public hearing stage. Um, and then at the time, there was another stock assessment that was underway and the council chose to pause development of that amendment pending the completion of the stock assessment. Uh, also uh, around that time, Regulatory Amendment 32 was developed to modify the commercial accountability measure to reduce the likelihood of commercial closures. Uh, the council received feedback from fishermen at the time um, who indicated that that change was in fact not necessary and so that amendment never was submitted. Um, all the while the, um, the assessment for the stock was continuing and that was finalized in 2019. So right now uh, the councils are looking to adjust catch levels for yellowtail snapper based on this latest stock assessment, CDAR 64, which also indicated the stock is not overfished nor undergoing overfishing. And so both the South Atlantic Council and the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council are taking action um, jointly to manage the yellowtail snapper stock. Uh, this is, um, I'm, I'm gonna focus now just on the South Atlantic. So these are um, landings from the stock assessment um, and this pertains to the commercial sector. So on the top panel, you can see the solid line shows the landing starting in about 2000 through current, or at least the time of the stock assessment. And the yellow dashed line shows you the releases in the commercial fishery. The bottom graph shows you landings by year, beginning in 2014 and separated out by months across. Uh, so you can see how the landings have fluctuated over time. And here's the snapshot of the recreational landings. Um, again, the longer time series at the top, and then um, 
by year starting in 2017 uh, for the recreational sector uh, on the bottom panel and so you can see the seasonality of the recreational fishery as well. So why is the council taking action? Um, as I said, a new stock assessment has been completed. The, so the catch levels um, have to be adjusted based on the results of that assessment and the recommendation of the Scientific and Statistical Committee or the SSC. That assessment also included a revised recreational landings estimates. Um, the Marine Recreational Information Program uh, which is the, um, the tool that allows managers to get estimates of recreational landings was modified in recent years to improve that approach. Um, revised estimates were included in this new stock assessment for yellowtail snapper. So now we have to adjust catch levels and um, allocations uh, for the both for the commercial and recreational sectors in the South Atlantic so that the assessment and the resulting management are in the same um, the same currency, so to speak. And this is something that is affecting fisheries the council manages that have a recreational component. So this amendment would adopt the new acceptable biological catch and the overfishing limit recommendations from the uh, scientific and statistical committee, uh, would split the ABC between the South Atlantic and the Gulf would revise the total ECLs, the annual catch limits for each of the region. For the South Atlantic, this amendment would revise the sector allocations, so the commercial and the recreational components of the total ACL. The Gulf Council does not allocate between the sectors, so they're not looking at doing that. And this amendment would also possibly establish um, management measures to constrain harvest to revise catch levels. And this is mainly being considered for the, rec uh, I'm sorry, for the commercial sector. So here are the acceptable biological catch recommendations. The ABC is the maximum amount of a stock that can be removed in a given year without having negative impacts on the population. And the council can't exceed the ABC that's recommended by the Scientific and Statistical Committee. They can set the annual catch limit at the same level, but they cannot go above it. And so here you see from 2021 through 2025 what the ABCs, um, and this is for, for the entire stock, so including South Atlantic and Gulf, what those levels would be in millions of pounds. And below the table, you have what the current ABC is, which is 4.13 million pounds, and how that is split between the South Atlantic, uh, which gets 75% uh, of it, and the Gulf of Mexico, which gets 25%. So now we're moving on to the recommended catch levels and the proposed actions in this amendment. The first one would be, would be to split the ABC. Uh, if the council takes no action and retain the current percentages, those could be simply applied to the recommended ABC. Uh, the 75-25% allocation was established um, back in 2012 using the Marine Recreational Fisheries Statistics Survey data, and it used a formula uh, uh, that looked at the 50% uh, or half of the average landings from 1993 through 2008, plus half of the average landings from 2006 through 2008. This table shows you what the um, acceptable biological catch levels would be in millions of pounds uh, for the South Atlantic and the Gulf. And I've got this um, box around 2022, because that's, of course, the soonest that management changes could be put in place. The second option for splitting the ABC would be to use the current formula that I just told you about, but apply that to the revised landings, the landings that now incorporate these new um, recreational estimates based on the new methodology. Um, I've already explained to you how the methodology was, was changed, and that had to do with the way that it was um, estimating um, effort. It used the a coastal household telephone survey for a number of years, and that was replaced by a mail-based survey, and that's called a fishing effort survey um, in order to improve those estimates. And so this change influenced those, um, those recreational landings um, estimates. So under this option, um, if you take those landings and funnel them through that same formula I just told you about, 
the jurisdictional allocations between the two councils change, where the South Atlantic would be allocated 81% of the acceptable biological catch and the Gulf would get 19%. So you can see what that would look like in terms of millions of pounds on the table on your screen. And again, the current levels are below it for your reference. Next, the council need to, needs to revise the total ACL, the total annual catch limit, uh, once it um, is determined which uh, portion of the pie it's going to receive. And um, so the South Atlantic can always uh, take no action to do that, but this is not a viable option since the council, as I said, has to adjust those catch levels based on the new assessment. And so this table shows you um, what the catch levels would look like, what the total ACLs could look like if um, the, the South Atlantic Council retained its 75% allocation of the ABC. And I'm showing you uh, how things would look for just the 2022-2023 fishing year, just because it would be a, a lot of numbers on your screen. Um, but so you have uh, several options here. The council, as I said, could set the total ACL at the same level as the ABC. So that's option 2A at the top. And on the far right, you can see what that would be in millions of pounds. The council could step things down a bit um, to account for management uncertainty. So they could go um, to 90% of the ABE, ABC to set the ACL or a little bit further, um, 20, setting it at 80% of the ABC. And then finally, the bottom option, 2D, is where the total ACL would be set at the lowest level, the lowest ABC that's been recommended. And it would remain at that level uh, moving forward until the council took action to change that again. So those are kind of the two bookends, um, the top column, the top row, and the bottom row, where the total ACL could be set um, under this 75% allocation to the South Atlantic. And then if the allocation changes, that's what, that's what those options would look like. Next, the, the council would have to revise the allocations for the commercial and the recreational sectors for the South Atlantic region. Uh, the council could retain the current percentages and then apply those to the revised total ACL that we just talked about in the previous action. And in the text box on the left, you have what the current percentages are for both sectors and the corresponding um, annual catch limits in pounds whole weight. This allocation is based on looking at 50% of the average landings from 1986 through 2008, plus 50% of the average landings from 2006 through 2008. Um, this uh, way to allocate between the commercial and recreational sectors has been used by the Council uh, since 2012. Um, and in, in this case, um, it uses recreational landings estimates that were generated through the old Marine Recreational Fishery Statistics Program. And here's what the um, commercial and recreational ACLs would look like under these, um, these scenarios. So this table shows you um, in the blue coloring, uh, the 75% allocation to the South Atlantic scenario, and in the green is the higher allocation to the South Atlantic. Then you have the two bookends where the total ACL would be set equal to the ABC or equal to the lowest ABC and held constant. And then you have across um, the commercial ACL and the recreational ACL based on the current percentages. Um, and again, these values in this table are in millions of pounds per weight. Alternatively, the council could revise the allocation based on the same formula with a revised stream of landings. So if they do that, the commercial sector would be allocated 40.73% of the total ACL, and the recreational sector would be allocated 59.27%. Uh, the same formula would be used, except um, the landings would now include those generated from the Marine Recreational Information Program um, Fishing Effort Survey. So the revised uh, landings that are currently being used uh, for management in the region. And here's the corresponding table. Again, the same color coding uh, to make it easier to see what's what. 
and the corresponding um, commercial and recreational ACLs under the revised allocations. So how would these adjusted catch levels affect the season uh, length? So this analysis is uh, that I'm going to show you is just for the largest jurisdictional allocation to the South Atlantic Council, so the one that's 81%. And this table here shows you how things would look like if the sector allocations between commercial and recreational remained as they are right now. So you have the fishing years on the left, uh, the projected landings, and then when we would expect the season to close if the catch rates remained the same. Um, so for the commercial sector, um, there is expected to be closures under this scenario. And keep in mind that, as I said, this is with the largest allocation to the South Atlantic. So we can expect that under the 75% allocation to the South Atlantic, there would also be closures, and those would be uh, likely sooner than projected here. Uh, for the recreational sector, there are not um, closures expected, um, as you can see on the table here. And then um, this scenario shows you how those projections would look like under the revised commercial and recreational sector allocations if the, if the council chose to revise those. Um, of course, the allocation to the commercial sector would be a little bit less, and so you would have in-season closures that could happen uh, sooner in the fishing year. So because we know that, because we know that perhaps um, th there's going to be in-season closures um, once these catch levels are revised, are there some commercial management measures that can be put in place to constrain the harvest to that new catch level. So the council is seeking information on that. And um, this graph here shows you that most commercial trips for yellowtail snapper between 2014 and 2019 landed about 200 pounds or less of yellowtail snapper. However, you have um, these trips over here on the far right that landed at least 1,500 pounds of yellowtail snapper. And so if you look at this another way, um, these are um, cumulative pounds of yellowtail snapper per trip in the South Atlantic for that same time period, 2014 through 2019. And the first bin on the left, um, so each of these is um, 50 pounds, and then each subsequent one is um, 100 pounds. So trips that landed 1,500 pounds contributed the most to the overall pounds of yellowtail snapper that were landed commercially between um, those, those years, 2014 through 2019, and they accounted for about 30% of the total pounds on average. So this information was brought to the council in September and they had some questions. Um, so you see what those are on the screen. These questions were also posed to the Snapper Grouper Advisory Panel, which met um, earlier this month. And I will tell you here in a bit, what they had to say, but the questions basically uh, revolve around whether there should be uh, trip limits put in place, um, when those could be put in place, perhaps during the spawning season, uh, should there be a trip limit step down, maybe after 75% or some other percentage of the commercial ACL is met to kind of slow down the harvest, um, should there be consideration of a trip limit for part-time fishermen? Uh, or a trip limit for multi-day fishermen, those who operate duly permitted vessels um, in, the, in the South Atlantic and Gulf, and you know, what that trip limit could look like, what the poundage could be um, for those folks. So um, the Snapper Group Advisory Panel actually recommended that the council retain the current allocation between the South Atlantic and Gulf, um, so that 75% allocation, and they recommended that they adopt the constant catch as the total ACL for the South Atlantic. And that number is uh, two point, about 2.8 million pounds. So that would be the total ACL for the South Atlantic region. And they also thought that the council should consider retaining the current sec sector allocation. So 52, uh, around 53% for commercial and 47% for recreational. Um, AP members did not feel that uh, discussion of trip limits was warranted at this time, and perhaps not until the commercial ACL is being met more frequently. 
Um, they also thought that part-time trip limits could potentially make new entry into the fishery uh, more difficult. Um, so those were the, the comments uh, from the Sniper Grouper Advisory Panel, and those will also be brought along with whatever comments are generated through um, the scoping um, period uh, to the Council at their upcoming um, December meeting. So in order to comment, um, you can uh, listen in on the webinars. We are holding two of them, one in, uh, on Tuesday, November the 2nd at 6 p.m., the other one the following day also at 6 p.m. So you can provide verbal comment during the webinar, which will be live, and there will be council members um, listening in and uh, taking your, your comment. You can also submit written comments using the online form that we have available through the public hearings and scoping meetings page on the council's website. And we are requesting that you submit any written comments through that means by 5 p.m. on Friday, November 5th. You can always send comments by mail at the address on your screen, and you can also fax them in if you prefer. Um, and that's what I have for you on Yellowtail Snapper, Snapper Grouper Amendment 44. Thank you for your attention.